So let me get this straight. We're out here arguing about maps and borders. And meanwhile, scientists just casually drop. Oh yeah, turns out there's an eighth continent under the ocean. What? <laughs> this is Zelandia, a continent that most people don't even know exists because it's lying beneath the ocean. Best thing about Zealand, no, no Facebook status updates. You know the minutia is thick in American news when they done found a whole darn continent and it's not making headlines. What it look like TV. I am back. What it do, baby? YouTube's own Varnell Hill. Did ya miss me? Your very own spokesman for the Insidians. We're inside and we're comfortable. They're so comfortable. And I'm back with another one. And it's just a real quick one, because I came across this and I found this very, very, very interesting. They done found a whole new continent. They done found the eighth continent. They pretty much thought it was there the whole time, but they finally got a chance to do all the scientific research that they needed to do to prove that it's the eighth continent. But for some reason, it's not making headlines. So let me get this straight. We're out here arguing about maps and borders. And meanwhile, scientists just casually drop. Oh yeah, turns out there's an eighth continent under the ocean. It's called Zealandia. Almost five million square kilometers of actual continental crust under the Pacific. And before you ask, no, this isn't Atlantis. This is real geology. The team finally finished mapping it layer by layer after decades of samples, drilling, sonar sweeps, and seafloor imaging. But here's the wild part. Zealandia isn't new. It's been here for millions of years but scientists just couldn't prove it until now because 94% of it is underwater. So they waited until 2023 to quietly admit it meets every requirement of a continent. Thickness, check. Distinct crust, check. Separate geological history, check. Oh yeah, we forgot to tell you, also, check. But now, the planet is literally revealing hidden land masses like DLC packs. And we're supposed to pretend this doesn't change anything? A whole continent just unlocked and nobody blinked. If that's not a sign we're living in the patch update version of Earth, I don't know what is. Here's what this actually means, though. Zelandia changes tectonic models, climate history, resource maps, and even how we understand the breakups of ancient supercontinents. This also affects earthquake data across the Pacific region. This even shifts how we trace volcanic activity. So scientists basically found the missing piece to the puzzle. But you don't just discover a continent like you find $5 in your jeans. This was hidden for a reason. And Tommen, even weirder. Everything on this planet is waking up, shifting, and revealing. If Earth starts rolling out expansion packs, you better believe something bigger is coming. Much bigger. And this ain't a conspiracy. This real shit. I'm out. Sounds to me like the Earth just got an update, man. Like we just done found a new continent. Or a new continent is rising. Or something is going on over there. But to me, it kind of makes sense because the Earth is humongous, man. And if you look at the Pacific Ocean like he was talking about, that is humongous. So it has to be something over there. Like, it, it can't be that much blank space. I really don't think y'all realize how big the Pacific Ocean is. The Pacific Ocean is much larger than you can imagine. The distance from Asia to South America is over 19,000 kilometers, enough to fit five moons in a row. It's hard to believe, but the Pacific Ocean is larger than the total land area on Earth combined. We could fit all the continents into it, and there would still be room left for Russia. The Pacific is the largest of all the oceans. This is hard to picture on a flat map, but it becomes clear when looking at a globe. You'll see that the Pacific takes up nearly half of the Earth. The Pacific contains the three deepest points on the planet, the Tonga Trench, the Philippine Trench, and the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is so deep that it could fit the peak of Everest, two Burj Khalifas, and two Eiffel Towers inside. Land is so scarce here that some small island nations are thousands of kilometers apart. The Pacific Ocean is home to the most remote and isolated point on Earth, Point Nemo, a place closer to astronauts aboard the International Space Station than to any human on land. See what I mean? I know y'all had no idea that the Pacific Ocean was that big. It's humongous. But now let's talk about if these claims are true. If it is an eighth continent on the planet and it is rising, what would be the ramifications for everybody else on the planet? 
What will it mean for us? What would happen if the world's eighth continent came back? This is Zealandia, a continent that most people don't even know exists underwater. You see, back in 1895, a geologist discovered that New Zealand wasn't just a cluster of islands, but the mountaintops of a huge continent hidden under the Pacific Ocean. But what if it suddenly rose above the surface today? Well, for starters, the entire world's map would change. Global sea levels would drop, and New Zealand, which is often squeezed into the corner of maps or left out entirely, would now sit at the heart of a massive new continent nearly two-thirds the size of Australia. As Zealandia pushes upward, it could disturb tectonic plates, triggering more earthquakes and volcanic eruptions along the Pacific Ring of Fire. However, this newly exposed continent could hold untapped resources like gold, oil, and rare earth minerals, leading to an economic gold rush. And countries like New Zealand, Australia, and New Caledonia would rush to claim as much land as possible. I am declaring war. If it is real, this is going to be very interesting because everybody's going to want to stake their claim. But for me, I feel like it should be just naturally New Zealand's. You know, their country is on the mountaintops of it, but I guess it don't work like that. Everybody's going to be trying to fight for their peace because that's just going to be a new, fresh set of resources. But anyway, man, the news hit TikTok. And as you know, TikTok is a place where when the news hits, it explodes. And right now, everybody's talking about the possibilities of this eighth continent. What do you mean we just discovered an eighth continent? Scientists just discovered this place, Zealandia. And while it is officially the most newest continent, it's underwater. And once this continent rises out of the water, it's going to start World War III. Because right now, the continent of Zealandia is located underneath the city of New Zealand. But this is where it gets more worse. -er. And for reference, the continent of Zealandia is about six or seven times more bigger than California. And once Zealandia finally resurfaces, every country is seemingly going to rise to Zealandia to get all of its gold, oil, and other rich minerals. You know, minerals like coal and redstone from the Minecraft game? But this is where it gets even more insaner. Now, after about six or seven years, scientists have officially declared this as the eighth lost continent, and that Zealandia was originally part of Pangaea. You know, the massive supercontinent? Where Zealandia, once it rises, will be the most beautifulest country in the world, with water that is so blue that it is basically green. And this is where it gets even more wilder. There used to be life in Zealandia. There's a high possibility that this this is where Atlantis really was. And whatever you do, do not look up Zealandia baddies. He really got a new continent before GTA 6. Would you ever visit Zealandia? My man was talking to y'all in that one, man. More insaner, more worser, more, more bigger. I know I can't talk, but dag, my guy. But anyway, I told you, man, once TikTok gets his hands on it, it's going to be all types of extra theories on it. But this does have some credibility. Before we get up out of here, it does have some credibility. I want to have a scientist come in here and explain to you exactly how they came to the conclusion that it is a continent. It's the difference between a rock structure, and she's going to explain it to y'all. So I want to talk about how we know that the new eighth continent, Zealandia, is a continent if most of it is underwater. The Earth's surface is divided into two types of crust, continental and oceanic. Geologists know that Zealandia is a continent because of the types of rocks that are there. Continental crust is made out of metamorphic and sedimentary rocks like granite and limestone. Oceanic crust is made out of igneous rocks like basalt. Continental crust is made out of a thick layer, about 20 miles on average, of low density rock. Oceanic rock, on the other hand, is a much thinner layer, about 5 miles on average, of a higher density rock. Because the continents are thicker and lighter, they float higher on the mantle than the oceanic rock does, and so continents are higher than the ocean floor. Zealandia is made out of continental crust rocks and is elevated relative to the seafloor, and that's how geologists know that it's a continent. So there it is. It's a lot of science behind this, and it's starting to look like it's pretty factual. I know a lot of my audience is a little bit older and some of y'all may still have dreams of hitting Jeopardy and showing off your mental prowess. So now you know this might be a trick question in there if they ask you how many continents it is. So don't let them trick you up. It's seven, but it's eight if you add the new one they just found. So don't let them get you if you get the Jeopardy, man. Don't let them do you dirty once you meet your life's dream. But anyway, y'all, we done reached the end of this journey. I just found this very interesting and just found it 
a little suspicious why it's not in the news. This seems interesting. Give us some interesting stuff sometimes in the news and not all this negativity all the time, man. There's more things going on in the world besides negativity. But anyway, man, we done reached the end of another journey. Hit me up in the comments section and tell me how you feel about everything you have just witnessed. Tell me how you felt about what just happened there. And if you done made it to this point in the video, you are my MVP. It was a stone groove, my man. I'm out of here. When you look at the landscapes of New Zealand, from the towering Southern Alps in the South, the volcanic mountains in the North, and the dramatic coastlines everywhere, you're not just looking at a beautiful island country. You're looking at the most prominent exposed peaks of Zealandia the world's hidden eighth continent. These islands are the largest and highest parts of a vast, mostly submerged landmass, giving us a tangible connection to this hidden place. Geologically, New Zealand isn't merely a collection of isolated islands. It's the crinkled, uplifted spine of Zealandia, forged by the intense forces of the Australia and Pacific tectonic plates colliding. The same ancient continental crust that forms the bedrock of New Zealand continues offshore, beneath the waves, making up the bulk of Zealandia. This shared ancestry explains the distinctive geology of New Zealand, its powerful earthquakes, and its dramatic, geologically active landscape. It's also the clearest indicator of how New Zealand is geologically different from neighboring Australia, which has very little tectonic activity and even fewer mountains. But let's play a game. What if the geologic clock could rewind? Or if the Earth's crust suddenly decided to lift Zealandia back above the waves? What would this lost continent look like today if most of it wasn't submerged underwater? You might assume that it would look or feel like Australia, but it would more likely be dramatically different. At roughly two-thirds the size of Australia, perhaps more comparable in area to the Indian subcontinent, Zealandia would stretch over 4,000 kilometers from north to south, an elongated continent dominating the southwest Pacific. Today, of course, New Zealand is just two main islands and a scattering of smaller ones. But in this scenario, New Zealand would be part of a much larger landmass. The current shallow areas of the Chatham Rise, Lord Howe Rise, and Norfolk Ridge would become vast rolling plains, perhaps with some low hills or plateaus. The submerged ridges, which today form a backbone to Zealandia, would emerge as significant mountain ranges, paralleling the existing peaks of New Zealand. And of course, there would be extensive new coastlines, creating vast new beaches, estuaries, and bays. And given its immense size and larger surface area, a resurfaced Zealandia would dramatically alter regional weather patterns in the Southern Hemisphere.